Hi, everyone. In this video lesson, we're going to analyze some collisions in one dimension uh, using our new knowledge of the law of conservation of energy for elastic and inelastic collisions. So we're going to do five problems building in complexity. So let's get started. So um, what you guys uh, hopefully came to the conclusion of uh, during your investigation that it is that the property of uh, the law of conservation of uh, linear momentum. And that is something along, along the lines of the following. Any collision? The, and this is just loosely speaking in words, the total momentum before the collision uh, is equal to the total momentum after the collision. So maybe something like, if you want to write an equation for that, total momentum initially equals total momentum in the final conditions. So momentum is conserved. So if you have two objects colliding, each individual object's momentum may change before and after a collision. But the total momentum, when you add them up, is conserved um, in and elastic collision. What you guys hopefully saw, so that's like for <clears throat> loosely speaking, really bouncy objects like rubber ball, two rubber balls connecting together. Um, <clears throat> in elastic collision, both uh, momentum, momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. So that was interesting. But then you guys looked at inelastic collisions and you guys looked at purely inelastic collisions where the objects stuck together afterwards. But in an inelastic collision, only momentum is conserved. So in the absence of any outside forces or energy being added to a system, when two objects collide, momentum is always conserved. But kinetic energy is only conserved for elastic collisions. And we talked about for inelastic collisions where the kinetic energy was not conserved, where would it go? Well, um, when two objects collide, probably going to make a sound. So sound energy. There's going to be some friction involved, loss of energy due to heat. Um, it would actually take some energy if the objects were crushed or deformed. It would take energy to do that. So there's lots of ways the energy can be lost. So can any collision truly be elastic? You know, probably not, um, but we'll still analyze some situations that are pretty much elastic and some inelastic ones as well. So let's get started. Again, our purpose for this lesson is just to get some examples in, building the complexity, eventually leading to a problem that's um, a pure inelastic problem, or pure elastic problem. I'll show you guys what I mean by that in a, in a little bit. So here we have, a railway car with a mass of 6,000 kilograms, it's moving right at two meters per second, collides with an empty freight train car, rolling to the left on the same track at three meters per second. We want to know what happens afterwards. So in this question, it's implied this is a purely inelastic collision where they stick together. Not all collision, inelastic collisions need the objects to be stuck together. Usually it's implied or it's, it's stated and it should be pretty obvious. Um, we're going to uh, also look at the kinetic energies after the collision and then just review where the energy might go. So just a, uh, I might just do a little simple diagram. So we have uh, mass one and it's moving to the right. And I might say V1 I for V1 initial, it is, um, going at two meters per second and I'll choose to the right be positive. While we have this other car sitting here, and it is going to the left 
at three meters per second. So I'm gonna say V2 initial equals three meters per second. And we'd like to predict what happens after the collision. So, so whether you wanna write P total before equals P total after, or just write P before equals P after, you can set up your conservation of momentum kind of however you feel comfortable. So what do we have? We have first mass has some momentum and that momentum is M1 V1 initial plus the second car has some momentum too, M2 V2 initial. Afterwards, and this is important, they are coupled together, right? So afterwards, they're like one mass with a combined mass of M1 plus M2 and they have some final speed VF. And again, this is the case because they're coupled together and they're moving with the same speed. So um, you may find the math really easy. And the thing you need to get used to is just a, a, all the subscripts that kind of float around in these problems. But we have everything we need to find the final speed. So VF, to get VF by itself, we would just do M1 V1i plus M2 V2i and divide by the total mass. I'll just do this to the right. So 6,000 times positive two plus uh, 3,000. And uh, I'm using to the right as positive. So um, mass one's momentum will be to the right. Mass two's momentum will be to the left. Remember momentum, momentum is a vector, but in one dimension, we can handle that direction by using a sign. So the speed or the velocity of the second guy initially was negative three in that direction. Divide by the sum of the masses, 6,000 plus 3,000. And we can work this out. I think I can use mental math actually. That's 12,000, 3,000 over 9,000. So about 0.33 meters per second. And so obviously the positive value for that indicates that they will be moving to the right I, you don't necessarily need to write that down, but you know it is positive, so they are moving to the right. Um, we probably could have guessed that initially just by using mental math. The initial momentum of the railway car was 12,000 kilogram meters per second. The train car, only 9,000 kilogram meters per second to the left. So clearly the railway car has more momentum, and because momentum has to be conserved after they collide, it makes sense for the bigger momentum to, to win out and they'd all be moving, the, the combined masses would be moving to the right. Um, let's look at the total kinetic energies. Are they conserved? Well, let's, uh, let's check it out. So before, so I'm just gonna scratch out some calculations here. So we have a half times 6,000 times two squared plus a half times uh, 3,000 now, I'm going to plug in negative 3 just to be consistent here. The squaring is going to make that positive. Uh, so everything checks out. So 3,000 times 4 plus 1,500 times 9. So 25,500 joules of kinetic energy. Afterwards, we have one mass moving at a certain speed. So the mass is now 9,000, it's like one object. And the speed we found 0.33. Uh, I think that should be 500 exactly, but we did a bit of rounding, so no big deal. Times 0.33 squared equals, yeah. So it's like with, with the rounding we did, about 490 joules. So you can see that a lot of kinetic energy lost here. And where to go? Well, you can imagine if these if two actual car railway cars collided together, there'd be a lot of noise, there'd be a lot of friction. The the railway cars would be kind of destroyed in a sense and deformed, and it takes energy to do all that. So yeah, it makes sense we lost a lot of energy, but momentum is conserved. All right, guys, problem one in the books. Let's do a second problem. So we have a car chasing after another car. So the car in pursuit has a certain mass, moves at 20 meters per second, and it's going to bump into the back of the other car, moving at 10 meters per second in the same direction. So it is gonna overtake the other car. The bumpers are gonna get stuck together 
and the two cars will move together with a common speed of 15 meters per second. So we're just gonna find something different. And in this particular problem, we're gonna find the mass of the second car. So uh, if you wanna draw this scenario out, you can. I might just draw a rough diagram, not a ton of detail here. But I am, I'll choose to the right to be positive. So we have initially the two cars traveling separately. So 20 meters per second, 10 meters per second. So it's going to get overtaken. And then afterwards, they're going to get stuck together. And they'll move with a combined speed of 15 meters per second. So everything to the right in terms of speeds and momentums. So let's find out what's going on. So momentum before should be the same as momentum after. So we have, let's let mass one be the um, car uh, overtaking. And again, this is an inelastic collision and it's always gonna be clear whether they get stuck together or not. And here they do, they are getting stuck together. Again, this is not true in general for all problems, um, but it's gonna be true for this one. So M1, V1I plus M2, V2I equals, and again, because they're coupled together, I can do this, M1 plus M2 times VF. And um, in this case, uh, we know everything except um, the mass of the second car. So I might actually propose to you guys, since we're solving for the mass, the second mass, I might, act, might actually be more practical for this one to actually leave it as M1 uh, VF plus M2 VF. And again, I don't need different subscripts because they're coupled together moving at the same final speed. Um, so let's get all the, um, the uh, like terms together. So I'm going to get the keep the M2 stuff on the left. So I'll be subtracting M2 VF. And then on the right, I'll have all the M1 stuff minus M1 V1I. And now I can get M2 by itself by factoring. Now I'm solving in a general sense, uh, V1I. If you just like would like to plug in numbers right away, if that, if that helps you, then yeah, do that. That's no problem. So M2 is gonna be M1 V1F uh, minus M1 V1I all over the difference in speeds at V2I minus VF. So let's calculate that. So 1200 kilograms, I might actually factor that out. Um, so 1200 V1F, or excuse me, uh, I said V1F and it's the same VF. So yeah, I just added the extra one there, uh, but it is just VF and it is just 15 meters per second. V1I was 20 meters per second. And uh, V2I, now you might be, don't panic, we're finding a mass and we are gonna get a negative value on top, but the for the second car, its initial speed was 10 meters per second and its change in speed was actually, it was the same change in speed. Um, it was, uh, its VF is uh, 15. So we get uh, 1,200 times negative 5 divided by negative 5. So we're actually going to get 1,200 kilograms. So they are the same mass. Uh, which kind of makes sense initially, uh, which kind of makes sense if they're the common speed together. It's kind of the average of the first two speeds. Now, we've done two problems. And at this point, I want to say you guys can self-check any of these problems by seeing if the momentum before and after is uh, conserved. So maybe we just do that for this one. So if we look at the momentum before, we have the first car, its mass is 1200 kilograms, moving at 20 meters per second. The other guy is 1200 kilograms, we think, moving at 10. And so if you do that, that's um, 24,000 plus 10, 12,000. 36,000 
kilogram meters per second. Afterwards, they're combined. Their combined mass is 2,400 and their speed 15. If you do 2,400 times 15, you get 36,000. And momentum is conserved, right? So uh, any problem, you can self-check. And so if you're doing um, an evaluation, it might be worth a check if you have the time. Um, I know the, the simulation that we used in our investigation only went up to speeds of 10 meters per second. But, you know, maybe there's a simulated simulation out there as you're doing practice problems where you can actually put in speeds that are higher and 10 and, and change the masses too. I don't know. I'm sure there's probably something out there. Or if you're a computer programmer, you can make one. Right. Let's look at some simple elastic collision examples. So we have two carts moving on an air track. Cart one has a mass of five kilograms and moving pretty fast to the right. So cart two is a lot smaller, one kilogram, moving at 10 meters per second to the left. Um, after the elastic position, cart two is moving to the right. Now for me, these are a lot harder to visualize. I can often visualize what's going to happen in an elastic collision when they couple by just um, kind of eyeballing and doing the mental math with their individual momentums and see which one's going to win out. Elastic collisions, hard to analyze. Sometimes I think something will bounce back, but instead it keeps moving or it actually stays still while the other one moves with a lot more speed. So I rely on the math a lot for these guys. Harder for me to predict. Um, so let's set, thing, set this up. If you'd like to draw a diagram, please do. But I think I'm just going to get this one going mathematically. But if a diagram, kind of like we did in the previous two questions, just helps you visualize what's going on, then feel free to do that. Do you know what? What the heck? I don't have to make a detailed diagram, but I'll just make a little one. So mass one, moving right at 40 meters per second, collides with mass two, moving left. And so that's negative 10 meters per second, if I choose right to be positive. And then after... Uh, what are we told? Cart two, the small guy, is moving at 73.33 meters per second. And so for mass one, and again, for me, not entirely clear. So V2F, is it to the right? Is it to the left? Honestly, I don't even know. It's been a year since I've done this problem, so let's find out. <clears throat> so let's set it up. So V1 initial. Uh, MV1 initial, M1V1 initial, got that right the third time, plus M2V2 initial equals M1V1 final plus M2V2 final. So you'll notice in an elastic collision, they're not coupled. They'll have two different speeds at the end. So we needed, in this question, we needed one more piece of information to solve it using conservation momentum. We need to know one of the final speeds. Uh, now, for this particular problem, I don't see a ton of value in solving for V2F. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a plug-and-play kind of person for this one, which is okay, too. So mass 1, 5 kilograms times 40. Other guy's little guy, plus 1. V2I is negative 10. Equals 5. And we want to find V1F. It said V2F. We're finding V1F. We know V2F, 73.33 meters per second to the right, uh, plus uh, 1 times 73.33. Suspiciously accurate. It's like maybe somebody ran the simulation beforehand to designing this problem. So that's 200 minus 10, so it's 190 equals 5 times V1F plus 73.33. So V1F, 190 minus 73.33, all over 5. So just solving for something different, 
one more example in the books. So 23.33 meters per second. And we got a positive value. So that would be to the right. So if we're looking at things in terms of momentums, most of the momentum in the system was to the right because the um, speed of cart one is so big and the mass of cart one is so big. The momentum afterwards of cart two, it's still big, right? It's still like a lot bigger than it was. It's like seven over seven times as big in the other direction, but still way short of the total momentum of 190 kilogram meters per second to the right. So yeah, V1F is moving to the right, according to my diagram, with a speed of 23.33 uh, meters per second. Um, maybe you want to try this one yourself. Pause the video and unpause when you're ready. This is one more simple elastic collision problem where I've given you some information after, after the collision um, so that we'll be able to solve it just by using momentum. And then we'll do a purely elastic problem where I only give you the, the initial conditions. All right. So, yeah, you know what? A little diagram can hurt. So we have cart one, mass one, moving to the right at 100 meters per second. And cart two, mass two, is moving left 50 meters per second. Don't know its mass, though. Then afterwards, we have... Cart two is moving to the right at 10 meters per second. And cart one is moving to the left, um, minus 140 meters per second. I guess I should say minus 50 meters per second, but choose right to be positive. So initially, me looking at this problem, that should be 140. That final speed for mass one makes me think that its mass is going to be smaller so that it gets launched back faster. So I'm going to predict that the mass two is going to be a bit bigger. So maybe like three kilograms or four. We'll see though. I could be completely wrong. But it never hurts to kind of have a little prediction because then if, you're, um, if your final answer is way different than your prediction, then sometimes you can catch a mistake. Sometimes your prediction was just really wrong, but all right, so traditional setup, M1, V1i, plus M2, V2i, equals M1, V1f, plus um, M2, V2f. And I think, again, in this question, probably not a lot of value in just rearranging for um, mass 2. Um, I might just uh, plug and play. So let's do it. So mass one, two kilograms times 100 plus M2, and we'll plug in negative 50, moving left, equals mass one, two kilograms. And at the end, moving 140 to the left, forgetting the one, minus 140 plus M2, and V2F is 10. So we have 200 minus 50 times M2, equals negative 280 plus 10 M2. So let's collect the M2 stuff on one side. I think it makes sense to move the negative 50 to the right where it's positive. We'll collect the constant terms, minus 280 to the left, add it on. We get positive 480 equals positive 60 times M2. 480 divided by 60 is actually 8 kilograms. So it was a lot heavier than I thought it would but I was right, it was heavier. Um, and again, that is something that you can, you know, you can check the momentums before and after and self-check. Um, uh, let's uh, continue. So we've done four, what I would say are pretty simple uh, problems where we set up the momentum before and after. And in each case, we had three of the four momentums. So like in, in our first question, we knew the momentums of uh, the first two guys, and then we had to find we had all we need because there was just one final speed. We had to solve for it. In the second question, we um, knew the final speed, 
and we knew the two initial speeds, we had to find M2. In this problem, the two elastic collision problems, I all uh, we found some speeds. So the only thing we needed in this problem was this one. We knew everything else. And in the in the last one, we knew everything but this momentum. And we kind of solved it and found for the mass. <clears throat> but we should be able to predict the final outcomes for any elastic collision with just the initial conditions. So how can we do that? So this brings us to our, what I'm just going to say is a true elastic collision problem. So <clears throat> some of my subscripts got um, moved around, converting this to a PDF. But here we have the mass of Matrix the Monkey combined with his bumper cart, 10 kilograms, and the mass of Super Turtle, 15 kilograms. And we have initially that, and this is that we have Matrix the Monkey is moving to the left at five meters per second, VMI, five meters per second, and Super Turtle is moving in the same direction with a speed of 20 meters per second. And we'll choose to the left to be positive. We don't have to. But I think some, I think it makes a lot of sense in this case since both of those initial velocities are to the left. And he's going to overtake Matrix. And he's going to bump into them. And they're going to have a purely elastic collision. We want to know the speed and direction of each car after the collision. We have two, after the collision, we have two things to find. So how can we do this? Um, so... Let's set this up. Switch to something we can see nicely here. Let's use, I like using yellow. <clears throat> so what does conservation of momentum tell us? Well, obviously it, momentum is conserved, right? So let's just set this up, being careful with our, our subscripts here. So um, matrix, his initial momentum, the mass of matrix, times matrix's initial velocity. So just, you can use M1 and V1i if you want to. I'm just using M for matrix and S for super turtle, plus super turtle's initial momentum. So MS VSI equals their final momentums, MM VMF plus MS VSF. Now what happens when we plug in all the stuff we know? Matrix is 10 kilograms, and he's moving at 5 meters per second. And again, I show his left as positive, right? Super Turtle, 15 kilograms, moving at 20. And we know Matrix is 10 kilograms. We don't know VMF. And we have Super Turtle, 15 kilograms times VSF. And <clears throat> 10 times 5 is 50. 15 times 20 so we have 350 equals 10 times VMF plus 15 VSF. Two things we don't know. Um, so <clears throat> that's the big idea for now is if we just use conservation momentum, we can't do it because we have two things we don't know, both final speeds. However, and this is something we haven't made use of in our simpler problems, but we haven't made use of the fact that in elastic collisions, the kinetic energy is conserved too. So for conservation of kinetic energy, we can set up a second equation. So the kinetic energies are conserved too. One half mm vmi squared plus a half ms vsi squared, their initial kinetic energies equals a half mm vmf squared plus a half ms vsf squared. <clears throat> and we can plug in what we know there. Now, my advice, because there's a factor of a half in all these guys, we don't need to consider those halves. We can just kind of cancel them out. And so we have 10 times 5 squared plus 15 times 20 squared <clears throat> equals 10 times vmf squared plus 15 times VSF squared. And 10 times five squared, let's just do the math. So it's 10 times 25 plus 15 times 400. So we get 6,250 equals VMF squared plus 15 VSF squared. 
So I'm going to come back here in a second. <clears throat> but what we have is two equations and two unknowns. But it's not quite like your linear systems unit from your grade 10 course, because the first equation is linear in terms of the speeds. The second one is quadratic in terms of the speeds. Uh, so this is almost like a linear quadratic system. Um, not quite quadratic though, I'm gonna show you what I mean. So uh, here's what's going on. The equation for concentrational momentum is linear. It's like a line. The equation for what we have here, the bottom equation, 6250 equals 10 VMF squared plus 15 VSF squared, is actually the equation of an ellipse. So you guys don't really study ellipses anymore. I had to when I was in high school. I'm not complaining though. But this is an ellipse. So what we're essentially mathematically, we're actually finding the intersection between a line from the conservation of momentum equation and an ellipse from the conservation of kinetic energy equation. And you'll notice there's two spots where they're gonna meet. One of those two spots will be the final conditions or the final condition. And that's gonna be our answer to this problem. The other solution, and this is cool because this is gonna be like a built-in self-check to our problem the other solution will be the initial condition. So I'm going to show you how that plays in as we solve this problem. Now, how do we solve this system? <clears throat> uh, I'm going to show you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to use, uh, at this point, I'm just going to uh, start solving the system and share with you guys some strategies. So I, th uh, so elimination is not going to work because these are not two linear equations. Um, but substitution, that method you learned in grade 10, will work. <clears throat> I'm going to isolate VMF in this equation. Why VMF? So I made a conscious choice because I saw that the coefficient in front of VMF is 10. And I like dividing by 10. Dividing by 10 is easy. If I were to find VSF, which I could, I could solve for that. I would have to divide by 15, not so nice. 10 over 15, that's two thirds. Fractions, nobody wants to work with fractions. So let's get VMF by itself. So VMF is gonna be 350 minus 15 times VSF all divided by 10. And if I simplify that, I get 35 minus 1.5 times V. SF. And again, that is equal to VMF. And I'm going to call that equation one. So I don't know what matrix's final speed is, but I know that it's 35 subtract 1.5 times super turtles final speed. Um, at this point, I'm going to sub that in to equation two, but I'm going to make a bit of a simplification. If you'll notice, each of these terms is um, divisible by five. So maybe if you want to, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna divide each of these terms by five just to make the problem have smaller numbers, maybe a bit more manageable. So that's 1,250 equals two VMF squared um, plus three VSF squared. And I'll call that equation two. So that's my starting point for the math. I just did a bit of simplifying, but now I'm going to plug my equation one into my equation two. Here we go, guys. Let's see what we get. So solving the system, I'm going to sub one in two. And I might just have to go back and forth just to, so 1,250 equals two times VMF squared which I said is equal to 35 minus 1.5 times VSF squared. Or 35 minus 1.5 VSF. So see what I did? I just subbed in what we knew into VMF squared. I put that guy in there. And now 
when I finish it off, plus three times VSF squared. Now the only unknown is VSF. This is an equation I can solve for VSF. And actually it is a, um, a quadratic equation we can solve. So we have the skills to do it. So uh, let's continue. So 1250 equals two. I'm gonna show this extra step. You may not need it, but uh, my fear is that some of you guys without me doing this are going to just do 35 squared and 1.5 VSF squared. This is a binomial times a binomial. So you can't just square each thing. There's four multiplications to do. So 1250 equals two. So 35 times 35, don't know that off the top of my head. 1,225, 35 times negative 1. 1.5, I think is 52.5, but I am going to use my calculator. So minus 52.5 VSF of another one of those. And then negative 1.5 VSF times itself is positive 2.25 VSF squared plus three VSF squared. So we're gonna expand, collect like terms, and then we'll have a quadratic uh, equation that we can solve. So 1250 equals, so two times one, two, two, five, equals 2450. And then 52.5 negative plus itself, or times two, times two again, minus 210. VSF, and then 2.25 um, times 2, so plus 4.5 VSF squared plus 3 VSF squared. And I'm going to collect like terms and get everything on one side. So 0 equals of 7.5 VSF squared minus 210 VSF and 2450 minus 1250. That's 1250. So at this point, the quadratic formula is going to help us uh, finish this one off. I'm just wondering, 210 divided by 7.5, what is that equal to? Well, that's equal to 28. 1250 divided by 7.5, okay, that doesn't work. So uh, we are going to rely on the quadratic formula in this case. That's okay. So VSF equals 2. So negative b, so the negative of negative 210, positive 210, plus or minus the root of b squared, so negative 210 squared, minus 4ac, so minus 4 times 7.5 times 1250, all over 2 times 7.5. So I'll do one more step on here, and then we'll uh, do this independently at home. Ooh, gotta squeeze that in over 15. So we get on the inside. So 210 squared uh, minus 4 times 7.5 times 1250 minus the root of 6600. Uh, which does not give us a nice decimal. And um, I'm actually just, if you guys pause, uh, if you want to pause the video, I'm actually just going to, um, I feel like 6,600 is off. <clears throat> so I'm going to double check. I've done this problem earlier and my hunch is that I've made some kind of small error earlier on that I want to catch. Uh, cause I, I believe we should get a nice round number for the solution here. So, um, sit tight for a second. All right, so I think I found my mistake. And if you've been, if you have been uh, screaming at your screen, can I find my mistake? Uh, divided by two, 
So if I divide everything by two, okay. So everything is good there. Um, 35 times five, okay. So I think, yes, I see the mistake, okay. So, so thanks for being patient if you had to fast forward. I believe I found my error. I just can't math. 2,450 minus 1,250 is 1,200. So that actually makes me feel a lot better because the mistake wasn't really early on. And I don't have to reshoot my entire video because let's be honest, that would just be disaster. So let's retry this inside the square root. So 2 tenths squared minus 4 times 7.5 times 1,200, 8,100, which is a nice square root. Sweet. So what do we get? We get two options. So VSF equals, so 210 plus the root of 8,100 divided by 15. 20 meters per second. So think about this. Super Turtle's initial speed, and the problem was 20 meters per second. His final speed can't be 20 meters per second. What we've done here, and remember our discussion from earlier, is one of your solutions will always be the initial condition. So I'll, I now know I did the problem right because my equation spit out the initial condition as one of its solutions. So I know that's not my that's not my solution. That's the initial conditions. I know that when I use subtraction in the quadratic formula, it's going to give me its final, and we get exactly eight. So super turtle after the uh, after the collision is moving eight meters per second to the left. What does that mean for matrix? Well, remember we said matrix's speed was 35 minus one and a half times um, super turtle speed, which we now know was eight. So 35 minus 12, I don't trust myself anymore. 35 minus 1.5 times eight, 23 meters per second also to the left. So kind of a heavy problem for sure. The math is heavy because we're solving a linear and then an ellipse equation because of conservation momentum, conservation energy. But the nice thing is, is that you will always, always, always get some the initial condition. And if you don't, you made a mistake. See, I wasn't getting it and I knew to go back and find my mistake. So if you don't get the, an, an initial condition, go back and figure it out. Um, and uh, uh, you don't have to worry. I won't be giving you a unit test full of purely elastic collision problems, but we are taking a for you course. We should be able to handle it. I would argue individually, any of the steps we did, not so bad. We're just applying for the most part, grade 10 math, uh, but you do have to have a care um, uh, when doing your solution, obviously, because I made one little mistake and it almost, uh, it almost, uh, threw off everything. So coming up next, we're going to analyze a few more complex co collisions involving relative velocities, yay, uh, and explosions. And we're also going to start tying in some conservation of energy in general to, uh, to solve some more complex problems. Uh, and then we'll actually look at collisions in two dimensions. But that's it for this lesson, guys. Um, Thanks for your patience, especially with that one little minor error. Glad we fixed it and found it out, and it wasn't too much of a problem. Hope you guys are staying well. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.